Hello and welcome to the channel. This is your host, D-Day, bringing you Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. If you're enjoying the series, please hit the like button, subscribe, and most importantly, leave a comment. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Awesome. So what I wanted to start on today, I was looking through the Void Ore Miner because I would absolutely love to get the final Void Ore Miner. The Void or Miner Tier 6, I notice, requires more of the Iridium Neutron Reflectors, no problem. Athium Tiles, which I already have, but also these Pellets of RTG Fuel, which when you click on them, they require dense iron plates, and then Plutonium or Blutonium. So the first thing that I made sure of is I have enough Plutonium to be able to make this Void or Miner. But then I looked into how do you make plutonium in the first place? And uh, when I pulled up the plutonium, uh, I realized that all of these are going to be the dust forms and repurp repurposing and stuff. And then the block of plutonium is craftable. So the beginning of the process is going to be making plutonium blocks. So they're craftable. And then the craft for it is man infused metal, which the void ore miner is taking care of. Cobalt is the same thing. Cyanide blocks, which are a byproduct of uh, using either the fission reactor or the fusion reactor from nuclear craft. And empowered payless crystal blocks, which we can make. The middle item has to be tiny piles of plutonium, which it's pretty cool. Like, uh, I've been wondering where does this plutonium come from because that's what's randomly poisoned me from time to time we have two now uh, it's radioactive so the suit has to be worn so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna make hundred percent sure that I don't accidentally touch anything that's radioactive so I'll switch to the hazmat suit for right now uh, cosmetic armor is my red dragon armor uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of it so I have my radioactive uh, my hazmat suit on and I've already cut two areas that I want to use uh, and and I'm trying to make this symmetrical so the design of my fusion reactor that I'm going to build is going to fit in one of these boxes so it's not going to be it's not the purpose of it is not going to be for making RF or being the most efficient the most the largest the best looking fusion reactor I'm more or less making this fusion reactor for the sole purpose of creating plutonium uh, so it creating RF is an added bonus for me you know because the byproduct is what I want I want the plutonium so let's see we're going to take a step back from advanced rocketry because I have this idea in my head and I can't get it out of my head until I actually implement it so we'll pause uh, the advanced rocketry and we'll go back to nuclear craft real quick uh, I want to come down here to the fission controller so let's build a nuclear furnace first so that we can get the gate a nuclear furnace we got the gate open, or not the gates, but the quest that was in the way. So kitchen nightmare advancement, cool. Let me turn up my volume a little bit. All right, and then we can go with the fission controller. Fission reactor is a mid-game multi-block generator capable of producing very large amounts of power. It can, and if you wanted to build a bigger one, uh, it, it can do a pretty good job. So let's see, fission controller. Let's see, that's the old one, that's the salt one, there's the fission controller. And let's see what's required. We need another nuclear furnace and we need the middle item. So another nuclear furnace and we need a machine chassis for the fission controller. Perfect. So we have the fission controller now, splitting the atom and the questing are perfect. So we have that one and then fission fuels. There are 52 possible fission fuels with varying duration, power, and heat generation. 
So there's a lot of fuels and a lot of crazy things. TBU fuel is one of them that they want us to make. I haven't looked into this, but let's see if we can do this just for the quest real quick. TBU fuel, TBU oxide fuel, so it's probably this one. What is this? Thorium 230. Do I have any of those? I do not. Where do you get thorium? The isotope. You put thorium into the isotope separator. So let's grab some thorium. Let's grab a stack of thorium and let's head to the basement because I moved nuclear craft into the basement. And let's find the isotope. Manufacturing isotope separator. So let's drop these in here because this isn't really that important for me right now. And I'll let that run while we make uh, the fission reactor that I've wanted to build. So I really was hoping that the gate was going to open up over here and it was going to give us the full schematics, but I guess it's fission controller and then everything else you have to learn on your own. So I did do my research. I wrote down everything that I needed. Uh, so let's see, I need fission reactor casing, which I put here into crafting already. Let's make what, let's pull out the calculator and make sure that I can do this right. We need 8 times 9 and then plus 6. Yep. So let's do a solid 80. Just cuz. There we go. That's the 80. And let's see the the fission reactor has to be built kind of the same way as the uh the smeltery from Tinker's construct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a 2 by 2. I know it's small. I know. But what I want it, uh, I want it to fit in the dimensions that we're playing in over here. So I'll put two dirt blocks here, and two dirt blocks here, and two dirt blocks here. So that I can put the here, and here, here, and then two in front, and here. That way it comes out for a little bit. And now we can knock these out. We'll start it like that. Then the idea that I have that I want to do is, I, since it's a 2x2, two two, I practiced a little bit. We have graphite blocks that I made a, a I put them, I made graphite ingots and they're in a compacting drawer so I have I have access to the graphite blocks as well. Uh, I want to use the cool designed one, that's, that's the one I like. For graphite blocks, these are the moderators, we need a total of only six. So that's all we need is six. Then we also need the, where the, the, the fission fuel is going to go into which is going to be the reactor cells. The reactor cell, I'm going to need six of these as well. Awesome. Then this is going to hold the fuel. These are going to increase the, the potency of the reactor cells. Now we need to take care of the cooling. So of course we're going to use Andarium coolers. And then if you hold shift on the cooler, they have rules, like the Andarium coolers are 140 heat per tick, which is the best from the coolers. But the condition is, must touch exactly three reactor casings at exactly one vertex. So what that means is that, oh okay, I need to make the Andir empty coolers first. So total coolers, I need 20. We got a zombie here that wants to join our party. So I need, what that means, 
must touch exactly three reactor casings at exactly one vertex. So three of these guys. So that means in the corners. So there's eight corners. So that's why I wanted to make eight. Eight of these. So the very bottom, what I'm going to do, if you count one, two, three, four, because they're touching one on the side, one on the side, and one on one under it. So it's in each in each of the corners. So I'm going to start with four endarium coolers. Then the design that I want to do is I want to alternate. I'm going to do one uh, reactor cell. And I'm going to do one graphite cell. And uh, the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I want to use emerald coolers. If you hold shift, must touch at least one active moderator block and one reactor cell. So the graphite is a moderator block and then the reactor cell. So emerald coolers, that's what I'm going to build 12 of. Which should be the rest, yeah. So, I'm going to put one here, because it touches one moderator and one reactive cell. And I'm going to put one here, because it also touches one moderator and one reactive cell. Then, to amplify the reactor cells with the graphite blocks, I'm going to switch these now. And now, on top of this, I'm going to, on top of the cell, I'm going to put a graphite block, and on top of the graphite block, I'm going to put a cell. So now this graphite block is going to increase the, the efficiency of the reactor cell, same with this one here. And then again, emerald because it's touching one of each and emerald. And then when I alternate again, same thing, they're touching two. Now the reactor cell is touching two of the graphite blocks here. And these reactor cells going up are going to be touching two of the reactor cells here. So let me do that now real quick. I'll finish this. Graphite block, fuel, fuel, graphite block, graphite block, fuel. And then I'll put down the rest of the emerald coolers here, here, here. They're touching two each. Here, here, and here. And then before I do this, I did this in a test world. And I found out that if I place down the four enderium here and then close the unit, I am having a net gain of, I believe, 39 heat per tick. So that means over if I turn it on and I leave it on long enough, the unit will overheat, uh, not very fast because it's only 38 heat per tick. Not very fast, but eventually it will overheat and it will actually melt into fluids that will burn everything around it. And I'm not building this machine for crazy power gen. I don't need that. That's what, what the fusion reactor is going to be for. This really I'm only building for the plutonium byproduct and uh, a little bit of power gen. I think 20,000. It's kind of like a, a nice little high five bonus to it. So to combat that last 40, I wanted to make two water coolers. So I need to make two more coolers. Two more coolers and then water cooler. Infinite water source, that's not it. So wonder if I had one already. Water cooler. And we'll make two of these water coolers. And what I'm gonna do with these water coolers, oh, let me show you. The rule for it is must touch at least one reactor cell or active moderator block. And they only do 20 heat per tick. It's, it's not that much but with the math that I did uh, it's exactly what I need so touching one reactor cell or a moderator block I'm gonna do it like that and then these two I'm gonna leave empty and then I'm going to do another layer 
because this will be the top of the uh, enderium. Because so when I fill this in, those are going to be touching three as well. So let's grab the fission controller or the fission casing. Now we can seal it. Seal this bad boy up real quick. Let's see if the wand can do the job. Yep. Make it a little bit faster for you guys. Did I run out of casings? Oh, I guess I did my math wrong. So I need a little bit more. One, two. Three, four. Fission reactor casings. I got sixteen in here. Did I just forget to pull all of them out? There. There. Oh, okay, that's why they were going out so quickly. It's because the wand wrapped around and it was doing the backside as well for us. Cool. So yeah, there, 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 and now it's a sealed unit. Our zombie friend decided to go swimming in the little water that we had back there. I'll leave him to it. And the fission controller... I'll go ahead and I'll put right here. Cool. So that's the fission reactor. And then let's see, I wanted to make it look a little bit prettier. Let's sleep the night away real quick. And I wanted to make the unit look a little bit prettier by accenting around the sides. So let's see, I made those sheet metal. Yeah, I made the wrong sheet metal for uh, the uh, distillation tower back there. So let's put these to use. I'll use these to make this look pretty. So let's just do the front because that's what's going to be visible. And this doesn't matter. Like it won't mess up the unit. It won't mess up the multi-block, I mean. Just accenting some. Just a little bit to make it look nicer. And make it more uniform. There we go. Fits in there nicely. Alrighty, so let me put the sheet metal up. And then what I also wanted to build was the uh, machine that's required for... So the the... Fission reactor is going to make the the I'm gonna run mox fuel. Let me run through it at the beginning. The fuel that I'm going to use is going to be mox nuclear fuel, right? So the mox nuclear fuel I'm going to make with plutonium and it'll make no mox nuclear fuel. Then when you use it in the fission reactor, it's going to get used up and become depleted mox nuclear fuel. Then what you use this for in the fuel reprocessor. So you break it down into 28 tiny piles of plutonium, which you can then turn back into plutonium to build more of the plutonium. So let's make the fuel reprocessor real quick. We need another chassis in the middle. And we have a fuel reprocessor, which I don't think is a, uh, it is actually a, a, a quest. Cool. Let me kill this guy because he's he's being annoying. You're a little too loud there, buddy. Sorry. And the fuel reprocessor, I can put it anywhere, but I think it'd be kind of cool if we put it in the same group here. Is there another one, Ryan, running around here somewhere? Not in here. 
Is he on the roof? Or is he stuck behind? Being super loud. Oh, he fell in the hole. What a nerd. Bye. Put some dirt down. Okay. Let's fly back around and where I want to put it all in one place so that I don't touch these radioactive fuels too many times. I'll put it right here. Right there. And then what I'm also going to do because I'm flying. There we go. I'm also going to make two ports right here. So let's see, we need fission. Oh no, let me open it up with the actual crafter. We need fission ports. And I need two of them. One for the energy that's going to come out and one for the... Okay, let's see. We need even more fission reactor casings. So I need one port for energy coming out and one port for items coming out. So let's make two of these hoppers and then we need four more of these fission, which perfect. That worked out well. Two fission. I'll put you up. And then let's break this. This one and this one and then I'll replace that with the ports. Oh, and that's important. It's showing the wrong side. So like, when you put these things down, they all look the same. All the sides look the same. And what was really hard for me to, to see, what I was trying to understand for a while, but all of these, you see, it's a square, and it has square sides, square sides. One of these sides has these squigglies right here. The squigglies is the output side, which uh, all of them are going to be inputs, and this is the output, the one with the squiggly line. So all the sides will have squares, except for the one with the squigglies. That's the main side. Let me see if I can put it down right. I think you need to, it faces front. Yeah, so you need to click the back end and see now both the squiggly sides are facing out here. So the first cable that I'm going to use, I need to, an item conduit and I need a power conduit. I need two, two power and one item. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to Oh no, I need another item. Duh. One more item. And then the item. So the item will be pulled out from here. It'll be extracted, always active. And I'll put it in here with insert. And then always active. And then we need to supply the unit with power. So we'll run it through the same line. there and then through here perfect so now it should get power fossil dark moon turf stone there we go I'll put that back there and I'll put up a facade later on cool so then also what we need is going to be a lever to turn it on because it requires a redstone signal which we have a bunch of, probably from Thomcraft. And then this is kind of unfortunate, it's kind of ugly. Oh, I'm gonna look for some better ways to make it, but there's the lever. We need a lever to turn it on and off. So, that should be the completed fission reactor. Now we need some fuels, so I am wearing my hazmat suit. That's the important part. Let's see, MOX fuel, MOX, nuclear fuel, uh, let's make 
Did it plus? I need uranium 238. Which is uranium chiseled. Okay. I remember. Which is kind of silly that you just need to chisel it to turn it into something else. So blocks of uranium. And then let me chisel it into the nuclear craft one. Where did I put my my chisel? There. And let's chisel it real quick into the industrial craft one. Okay. And now when we put this in here, yeah, it makes us the uranium. So let me just turn it all. There we go. That's the uranium we need. I'll put this up. That's trash. I'll put that up. And I'll put the chisel away, my pick away, my wand away, and good. So let's see. Now we should be able to make mocks. Because I have a couple of plutonium that I've gotten from uh, from questing. There we go. Let's make three of them. Mox fuel. And I believe mox fuel is radioactive. That's why I'm wearing the suit. The mox fuel and the plutonium, I believe, are radioactive. So we made three mocks. Let me stick it in here. And look at that. Negative one heat per tick. I'm very proud of that. That means that I can have this run. AFK, no problem. It's running at a negative heat per tick. So it's never going to melt down. And I love it. Like I got it as close to zero as possible. And with the mox fuel, it's going to create 21,000 RF per tick. Which is kind of nice. It's a little extra. I'm going to end up plugging this in with the other fusion reactor from nuclear, no, from extreme reactors that I'm going to build here. I'm going to link them both into a power cell so we can have a little bit of extra power gem. So what's great about this is now generating power. So it's generating power. It's going to slowly turn this into depleted MOX fuel. The depleted not MOX fuel is going to come out of this hatch and into the fuel reprocessor that has power and it's going to turn it into plutonium for us. Uh, the power that it's genning right now, uh, I'm going to let it waste pretty much because I don't need the power. Our system is running at a deficit right now. We're not really a deficit because the void ore miner is eating so much power with its speed upgrades that I'm inputting 180, I'm outputting 180. So that just means that the void ore miner is going to be running slower, but it's not running a deficit. So power gen is something we need to work on, but like this 20,000 right now is not important to me. I also, this episode, wanted to make the gate to fusion or to, I keep wanting to call it fusion, but uh, I want to build the gate to extreme reactors, which requires a reactor controller legacy. So let's grab that real quick. Reactor controller, controller legacy. There we go. And all of this stuff we have, but it needs to be made in a basic crafting unit from extended crafting. So let's make that real quick. All right, block of iron, crafting tables, basic components, we need four of these. Luminescence, let's make a stack of luminescence. We need four of these. One, two, three, four. And then one, two, oh, two, three, four. And then we need one of these. And we need 
one of those, which requires another four. So let's make another four of these. And now we should be able to make a basic crafting. Perfect. Basic crafting, I'm going to just place it right here for right now, right here in the middle. Oop. And in this, we can make the Extreme Reactors Fusion Controller. Fusion Controller Legacy. Reactor Controller Legacy. We'll be able to make that. Missing items. Oh, because you don't have access to it when you use basic crafter. So we need a lead large plate. Let's see. Let me just make sure 100%. Yeah, there's no plus button for this. So we need fission reactor casings. We need four of them. We need another fission controller. So we need another two of the furnaces. nuclear reactor. So we ran out of basic platings. We ran out of lead sheet metal. Go. Four of these. One more of these. We need the chassis. We need the fission. So we have the fission controller. We have four casings. We need two uranium plates. And we need a lead large plate. Lead large plate, which we can send through the metal press. Let's see. Let's see if I can just drop it in manually. Which one's the plate? Plate is right here. Let's just toss you in real quick. Nice. And then there we go. We need the uranium plates and we need the nuclear reactor in the middle. Do we have any of that? Need three of these. Don't have any of those so we need dense lead plates, a whole bunch of them, which are lead plates in there. So let's see, did I have this already running through? The compressor? I did not. Lead plates. And let's get tick acceleration on you. Legacy, we need this, we need three of these.
Alrighty, and we need more dense lead plates. Cool, so there's the nuclear reactor that we needed for the middle. And then we need the uranium plates. Oh, I have those, good. Put these up. And now, when we teleport, we should have everything we need for the legacy extreme reactor. It was like this. And we have the reactor controller legacy. Perfect. And now we have the gate for it. What what do I want? Blocks of uranium? I don't. Reactor glass. Yeah, I'm going to be using glass in the front. Definitely in the front. Cool. So now we have the gate, and we also can do draconic gate if we wanted to. But let's stick to extreme reactor. Did extreme reactors have... I think it only opens, like it's one random gate. Industrial craft, I don't think there is an extreme reactors. There is not. Which it's kind of frustrating because I'm building this extreme reactors because there's a gate for it and because I think it's pretty and it's a little variation. But the uh, fission reactor can also process the... Uh, it can also process uranium into cyanide in the fission reactor. So this reactor I'm making just because it's it's for fun, not because it's uh, re required. Oh, you get all four. Duh. This one is just for fun because I like the unit itself. So I'm going to make this the same size. It's going to be a 4x4. Four four. So that's all 16 that they gave us. We need another, let's see, let's just go ahead and make some for right now. We need reactor casings. Let's go with, does 100 sound good? Let's just make 100. If I made too many, I made too many. I'm, I can always go with a secondary project and uh, and uh, build a new reactor in another location, make it look really cool. We just need these. It's making steel right now. That's what's the what the holdup is. Steel in the alloy furnace, I believe, because that's the it's a one block, super simple automation of steel. So let's grab some of the reactor casings and start working. So the sides or the corners, they have to be the solid pieces. They have to. So I'm going to make this the same size as the, uh, the fission. The, uh, the fission reactor that we just built. That way I have some uniformity going on here. Make it look nice. There and there. One up. Wrap that around. And up. Now it's a box. Cool, we got a box going. The top four are going to have to be the, uh, where is it? Reactor control rods. So we need four reactor control rods. We also need reactor fuel rods. So let's make the four control rods first because they have to go up top. Oh man, what's the middle item? CPU core. Okay, we need four of these. We need four of these. One, two, three, four. And then 
one, two, three, four, oh, four, and one, two, three, four, and let's put these up top, like so. All right, now we need to fill in. I'm going to do glass here, and I want the reactor controller to be on the same level so that it's uniform with this right here, like that. Yeah, that looks nice. Now we need a lot of reactor glass. I'm going to fill it in from the inside. Put some glass. Because at this unit, I like looking into the inside of the unit, which because I made it a two by two on the inside, we're not going to be able to see anything but the rods. So let's make some more. We need the fuel rods, but let's make some more reactor glass first. All right, so we can make six and then let's make another, let's just make another hundred get this bad boy working. Okay, reactor glass. There, there, and there. And then fill in the back. Reactor glass. We have the reactor casings. 16. that. Got another 20. Twenty-four. It's funny, you can hear a little bit of clicking from knowing that the, the fission reactor is uh, radioactive. All right, so let's work on the fuel rods and then we'll fill in the last part. So let's see, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine times four. So let's do 40 of the fuel rods. We got more casings coming in. Like I said, I can always up the uh, the reactor later. There's our 40. And then let's go from the top down. This is an angle that we don't really see that often in Minecraft. Usually people build from the ground up. I'm building from the ceiling down. As long as I don't lose track of where I am, I won't miss a spot. Okay, now we just need to fill it in with reactor glass. Let's see, we got seven. Okay. Reactor casing, and it was fused quartz. Perfect. 
perfect. And there, particle effect, and it's up and running, and it works. And I can turn it on. This thing does not melt down. That's the best part about it. All right, let's see. Then what I want to do is this unit, I'm probably going gonna go in through the back. Should I go in through the back or in the side? Let's do the side here. I'm just going to do this and go around the back. Open this up a little bit. And then let's lay some stone. So we can walk back here. Whoops. Okay. Grab another tool. Should be the back of the unit. Yep. Yeah. There is the energy port. Yeah, this is what I wanted. I'll grab power. Let's see, should I make it available from the outside? Make I'll repurpose this power cell real quick. Put you there. And I'll make this an in. So all of the sides are going to be input. Yeah. And I'm going to run the cable back here. Uh, let's grab power. And then let's make two ports. We need to make two ports for this unit. Reactor port, yeah. Two access ports, one and two, perfect. And I'm going to replace, I guess I could do it in the back. Replace this one and this one with reactor ports. Okay. And I also need an RF port. And that is the power tap. I need one of these. And I'll take this out and put the power tap right here. And this one should be ha have an extract always active. Let's take this one piece out. Cool. And this piece. Awesome. So now the power that this is going to make is going to get extracted and put into the power cell. And then let's see one more thing. Just to make sure that I did this right. I'm going to refill all of this after I make sure. Yeah, so this side's going to be an input. This side's going to be an input and it doesn't conflict because this is going to have the power coming out and it's going to go this way to f do the fission reactor. But also going in, I want it only going in 
to here. Insert. This one will be extract. This one will be insert. And then the this unit, of course, is insert. So now we have the power from both of the generators are going to go in here. All right, and then I need to change one of these to outlet output mode, eject waste, yes. I'm gonna grab a storage chest. Cool, I got one. And put the storage chest down. And let's see, I need two item. Here and here. Ah, come on, create a flight. We need this one to be an extract and an insert, and I want it always active. This one's going to be an insert, always active, and this one's going to be an extract. No, the other way around. Blue is output, so this is going to be an extract, always active, and yellow is an insert, always active. And then this one is going to be insert extract always active, and let's grab some uranium. Got a bunch of uranium going. Cool. Let's put you in here. Alright, and it's filling it up. Yep, you can see that it's filling it up with the uranium. Okay, it's full of uranium. And now, activate reactor. Temperature doesn't matter, this thing's not going to melt down. You can just make it more efficient. For the uh, fuel that you put into it, you can cool it down and you can make, uh, make the fuel last longer for the RF that it powers. Uh, so right now, it is making 25,000 RF a tick. This machine is making 21,000 RF a tick, which is a benefit, you know, like it'll go into the system. So let's see right now, does it take into consideration? Or no, it won't read through this, because this is only plugged into the induction matrix. But... This should be an insert only. Yeah, insert only, always active. The energy is going into the power cell from the fission reactor and into the back of the power cell from the fusion reactor. But power is the added benefit. The reason why I wanted to make these machines is the extreme reactor. I'm gonna have dedicated to making cyanide. So it'll, it'll burn this, and since I did the back with an insert and an extract, this one, yeah, it's burning the uranium for power, and it's creating cyanite as a byproduct. So it's going to burn the uranium for power, and then the waste, it turns into cyanite, and it gets pulled out. So I'm going to be refilling this with uranium. It's going to pull in, put it in. It's going to burn it, make RF, and then the waste product cyanide is going to come back and get put back in here. And the cyanide is what we need to make the cyanide blocks so that we can make plutonium. We can craft plutonium. And uh, this machine, let's see, you're running on one more NOx. So we manually make the NOx with the either plutonium or plutonium. We let it run through here and it'll make depleted NOx, MOX, which will uh, come out of this port and be put into the fuel reprocessor, which immediately gets turned into tiny piles of plutonium. And keep in mind, I'm still wearing my hazmat suit. This stuff will kill you. The tiny piles of plutonium will kill you. So now we have tiny piles of plutonium. 
there's one thing I'm going to do. I'm going to grab one plutonium, and the rest I'm going to keep as tiny piles. We don't need the reactor glass anymore. And I'll put up the... that. So we have cyanide, we have plutonium, and uh, the rest of the stuff we can make. And I'll leave off the episode with something cool that I'm not sure everyone knows about, uh, but plutonium can be scanned and can be replicated. So let's see, three. I'll kill the power and then it'll stop scanning unfortunately. I clicked one, one time too many. But that's what I wanted to show y'all. The plutonium can be scanned uh, and then it can be replicated with UU matter. You can use UU matter to replicate it. And I've been looking for like uses on what to do with UU matter. Uh, one thing I did do was uh, when we killed the ender dragon, I scanned the dragon heart and uh, with two buckets, so 2,000 millibuckets, you can make dragon hearts as well. So that's, that's a cool thing as well. But yeah, this is what I wanted to end the episode off. We made plutonium, uh, and then I'll manually make some plutonium next time. But yeah, uranium into the fusion for cyanide. Cyanide gets turned into blocks. Uh, the fission reactor takes mox fuel, makes plutonium. We use the plutonium and everything to create plutonium. And I don't believe uh, plutonium can be uh, uh, scanned and replicated. And I think the only way, unless I'm wrong, the only way you can make plutonium is if you craft it. And I'm not 100% sure if... Uh, See, like plutonium dust, I looked through it. It can You can crush the ingot. Okay, so you can't make the dust. There's no blend. So how do you make the ingot? You make it from the dust or from the liquid. Dust, dust, dust. Or the liquid. Dust. So let's see. Liquid comes from melting the dust or the ingot. Dust or the ingot or the cube. Melter. Electrolyzer. Molten plutonium fluoride. Pretty sure that comes from mixing plutonium. Molten plutonium. See? So as far as I know, from JEI, the only way you can make plutonium is by crafting the block itself. And now, like that, fusion makes cyanide. The uh, fission makes the tiny piles of plutonium. And it's kind of weird. Like, you make... You make the plutonium blocks. Like, you need three tiny piles of plutonium to make a block of plutonium, right? So that you can break down into nine plutonium ingots. And then you use the plutonium that you make to make three of these MOX nuclear fuels, which then turns into the uh, depleted MOX which then you put through the fuel reprocessor, and then you get, so out of three of these, you get, what is that, 7, 14, 28 times 3, I'm not going to do the math, but that's obviously a net gain. From three tiny plutoniums, that you go through that process to, to make more plutoniums. But uh, the mocks, after, after you, you could, if you wanted to, you could just straight up replicate the plutonium like this. There's plutonium and I'll put it on repeat run because I'm looking for reasons to use my my uh, UU matter. But see, plutonium is 213 millibuckets for each one. But this is a good use for UU matter. I need to waste some of it or gather some of it because I know end game chaos shards are going to be really expensive. So maybe I'll just do a single run just to make one of the plutonium. But uh, there you go. You break, you destroy one when you replicate it or when you scan it. Then you make another one. 
So there's a net gain in plutonium this way as well. So that's that's two ways to make plutonium. And uh, on that, thank you so much for watching. I hope this was entertaining and informative. I had a lot of fun, and I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you.